Hi, and welcome to the latest episode of From the Bench, where uh, Sid Ziegler, that's me from Outsports.com, talks with now Dr. Wade Davis. Congratulations on your honorary doctorate from Northeastern University, Wade. Thank you, brother. And you hung out with LL Cool J this weekend. That's pretty cool. Uh, so let's just jump right into Michael, Sam, and the draft. You were saying something to me before we started uh, about this may not being the best week in the world for the NFL. What did you mean by that? I don't think the NFL is in a situation where it can win, right? If Michael Sam goes high, then people will say, oh, they just did it because they wanted to prove to everyone one else that they're accepted. If he goes too low, then they go, oh, well, the NFL is not ready for an open gate player, so scouts and, and GMs were afraid, you know. Michael Sam basically has to go like the first pick of the fourth round in order for the NFL really to look like they just evaluated him on talent. You know, they're in a no-win situation, and I just believe that people who talk about this work doesn't have failed to forget the NFL is a business, and it would make no sense, right, for Michael Sam to be really on paper and on the field a third-round draft pick. And then for him to fall to the sixth round, like teams would be ecstatic. They would be like, wow, this guy's a third round pick. He's available in the fourth. I'm going to take him. You know, like, and I, I can't see 31 other teams going, well, this team doesn't want him, so we don't want him. And now it's 30 teams. It's, it just doesn't seem logical. And I wish people looked at it from a, a talent standpoint, from a business standpoint, and from a player stand, standpoint. Okay, so there, there is so much here. There are the fans, there's the media, and there are the NFL teams, the NFL itself. So let's just, one quick snapshot. What do you think is the range that he could be selected in where the reaction won't be about his sexual orientation? He would need to go fourth round. <laughs> he goes mid-third round or fifth round. You think that people start to chatter. Yes, I think that if he goes too soon, it's chatter. If he goes too late, it's chatter. He needs to go like the 18th pick of the fourth round, and people will go, oh, that's where he should go. Well, it's after he came out in, in, in February, Vegas put the over-under at middle of the fourth round for him to get drafted. So that's like right in the sweet spot. And I think anywhere from mid-third round to end of fifth round, I think there's a wide range because, as you know, and you have guys who are supposed to be top five picks that slip to number 15 or 20. You have first-round picks that go to the third round. Guys who are not even supposed to be drafted get called by the Patriots in the third or fourth round. So there's a big range. I give a bigger range. But early in the third or the second or the sixth or seventh, I think you're starting to get into some trouble. I think uh, Michael won't go to the third day. You know, I – if, if I was a betting man, I'd bet the fifth or sixth round, um, just based on re reports I've read, conversations that, I, that I've had. His combine workout really didn't help him. You know, um, I think that, that that helped to fuel, you, you know, this discussion that, that, that he is too small or too slow or, or whatever. Um, I just hope that at the end of the day, people realize that it's a business and that it doesn't do anyone, you, you know, um, any good to have a discussion that is void of the fact that NFL is a business and only focus on the idea that he's a gay player, the NFL is homophobic, therefore he won't get drafted. Well, I, I think the it's a business thing kind of plays a couple different ways. Yeah, it's a business and, and teams make more money by winning lots of games. The, the franchise value goes up, they sell more merchandise, they, they make more money. The other piece of this, and so they want the best player, right? They want the best player, and in, in a passing league, they need pass rushers, and that is Michael's skill set. The yes. other piece of this that I think plays into it is the monetary value of the first openly gay player. And you look at what Jason Collins, who's a guy coming off the bench, when he came out, he led the Wizards in jersey sales. When he was signed by the Nets, he led all of the NBA in jersey sales. I had dinner with a friend on Friday night who is not a big football fan, and he said the week after the draft, he will buy a Michael Sam jersey. There is money to be made, and whatever team owner, I'm assuming that this is a decision that team owners are, are, are going to be a part of because he's the first gay player. Team owners see that, and they see a guy who might make $600,000 the first year. 
he can make back his salary before training camp for that team. So I think that's a part of the business that I think you have to consider when you're talking about when you might get drafted. I, I would agree with you, but I would say from a player perspective, I'm sure if you ask Michael Sam, he would not want to be drafted because a team thought that they could make money off of him just because he's gay. I would imagine that Michael would, would tell you he wants to be drafted based on his play on the field, and any athlete worth his or her weight will probably reiterate the exact same thing. So, you know, from a player perspective, Michael Sam will be happy just to be drafted. Um, so I get your point from a business perspective, but I was speaking business on the fact that the NFL wants guys who can play, and if Michael Sam can help a team win, then they're going to evaluate him and draft him as, as such. So this is what I don't understand. I mean, I guess I do understand it, but we'll, let's talk about it anyway. When I talk to Aeneas Williams, right, Hall of Fame guy, lives in Missouri, t watched every single one of Missouri's games this season. He said, I don't care what numbers they, he threw at them at the pro day or the combine. That guy is a football player. I have that guy on my team any day. So you, and when I hear Warren Sapp and, and Jerome Bettis and these other players say the same thing, that guy can play. But the media keeps spinning this yarn about the pro day wasn't, was okay, but the combine was pretty bad. And, and so I'm left, you know, as, a, as a, trying to look into the situation, trying to figure out who's right. What, what mathematical formula did these teams use between the tape and the combine and the numbers and the, and the height and the weight? What's the, what's the formula they used to figure this out? Well, so I watched a lot of sports in over the last couple of weeks, and from my own understanding of it, you know, they like there's a height, weight, speed, strength thing. You know, all those testing at the combines, they kind of put it all into like this this formula, and and a lot of it's historical based too, right? So historically, defensive ends or cornerbacks or whatever have had a certain height, you know, and they look at can a defensive back who's five nine play well up against a receiver. Who, who are now coming out at the average of 6'3", you know. So it's based on who they're going against, all of those act, actual things, right? And if you look at Michael Sam, you know, first-round defensive end guys typically, you, you know, have a certain height. They have a certain speed. You know, they're, they're the Jadavion Clowney types, and that is not who Michael Sam is, right? But then you get to the third, fourth, or fifth-round guys, then you talk about guys who have a high motor, right, have a guy who – who doesn't have any black marks on his, on, his, on his record. So those types of things matter then. They, they, you know, the height, weight, speed things matters a lot in the first couple of rounds. But also, it's the media's job. It's, you know, it's Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay's job to, to deconstruct a player down to, you know, his pinky, ringers, his pinky finger size in, 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 in order to have a story, you know, because – and also – the, the draft was later this year, so we had, you know, an extra three to four weeks to have this discussion, which Michael Sam was a, was a part of. Like, think about um, Johnny Manziel and Jadavion Clowney. Like, I've never seen two players deconstructed more than these two, two, two guys just because the media didn't have anything else to talk about. And Teddy Bridgewater, I mean, he was, this is a guy who was potential number one draft pick, and now I read something today that said he might not even go in the first round because of, this, this over-analysis, it's like once the games stop, then the media's job starts, and they have to dissect every little detail, every little play uh, in front of them, and, and they do it better than anybody else. Yeah, and, you know, like you have these scouts who have a job to, to do, and they need to get it right because their job is on the line. So they're even spending more time than normal looking at Michael Sam and go, hey, you know what? The distraction thing is probably in the back of some someone's mind. So, is 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 he worth the distraction? Like now, let's look at all of his measurables. And yeah, his combine workout didn't help him, but his tape is brilliant. Yeah, but the distraction thing—I don't even buy the distraction thing. I just, I just don't think it's going to be any kind of distraction. It'll be a blip on the radar screen at OTAs, a blip on the radar screen. At and, yeah, there'll be more media there for the first game, and, and they'll ask the players about it. But by the time that first game rolls around, I just I just don't buy the distraction thing as an argument. I don't think it's a good argument either, but people will use it, definitely, because they don't have any other arguments, you know? So looking at the draft now uh, and looking at where, where the teams are, when you were in the draft and, and you were getting the, – the draft went – 
and, and you weren't selected, but then you, your phone started ringing. What teams were you like, I really don't want to live in X city? Like, what, what, what's going through Michael's head right now? Like, I really hope that so-and-so doesn't pick me. Michael will not care which team drafts him. Uh, or... da, 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 da. I know, I know, I know. But where do you no, want no, to no, 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 but seriously, though, so here's what's, here's what's going to happen. So when, 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 my, when the draft ended, I got a call from the 49ers, from the Jaguars, from the Ravens, from the Titans. I didn't care where I was going to play. I cared about how many people they had in my position, right? So initially, I committed to the 49ers, but they had 13 defensive backs. And then the Titans called, and they had seven. Right, so my odds were a lot better. So I had to call, I think it was Terry down here at the time, and tell him I'm decommitting to the 49ers, and he was pissed. Right, so Michael Sam, if he doesn't go draft it, is 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 going to spend more time thinking about how many defensive ends do they have that have my skill set, whether or not, or care whether or not it's in New New York versus Tennessee. Because if he makes a decision based on location over you know the number of defensive ends outside linebackers that that they have, then he's been getting some really bad advice. But I don't I, listen. I don't think there's any chance. I think there's zero percent chance he does not get drafted. None. I, I can't. I can't imagine the NFL letting that happen. I can't imagine 32 owners passing over him six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Some of them. I'm saying like he's sitting there. Do you really want to go play in Jacksonville, or would you rather play in San Francisco? That's what I'm talking about. Oh well. <sighs> I think that's tough because, like, are you basing this on the idea that Jacksonville is less accepting and San Francisco is more accepting? I'm just saying it is le I, it's less fun. Yeah, I'm going to say it, Wade. Jacksonville is less fun than San Francisco and New York and Miami. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Well, so I would say that Michael Sam would probably tell you, look, I need, I'm going to go fourth, fifth, sixth round. I got to make the damn team. So I'd probably rather end up in a boring place like Tennessee over New York where there's bright lights and big city where I can easily get distracted from doing my actual job, right? Um, so if that's me. Um, and, you know, to be honest, if, if Michael Sam slips to the sixth or seventh round, he should maybe want to be a free agent so he can choose where he goes over going to, you, you, you know, some place that says, oh, let's just draft Michael. He's a good player, but we got nine other defensive ends. Yeah. And then you got cities like Houston, which is near his hometown, and, and, and the Rams and the Chiefs that are this Missouri. So those, those places could play in. All right, last thing. Give me three teams. Give me three teams you think would be a good fit for him or that you think you, you maybe you've heard or you just would speculate might have an interest in him. I'd say Broncos, um, Houston Texans. And Carolina Panthers. Well, I got two, and that's interesting. We come up with totally different to different teams. Those are all super interesting. Um, I mean, you, I, I talked to Langton Ron Rivera, and, and you talked with, with John Fox when we were in Orlando, and um, I know the I know those guys would be accepting. Uh, I come up with the Patriots. I just think that you know Rob Kraft. He already has such a legacy as an owner uh, in the win column, six different Super Bowls, three wins. This would, add, this would add another element to it. I look at the Cleveland Browns. For some reason, the Browns keep bringing in my head the conversation. That I remember in Orlando watching uh, Farmer, the GM, come up to you, and, and, and he went out of his way to come thank you for that conversation. I talked to him afterward, and he and, and some other guys at the front office, they're like, yeah, like this is an opportunity. And, and then the third team, I don't know the Dolphins. I, 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 I spent time talking to some of those guys and, and the owner, and I, I just did a fly. We happened to face Tom Brady a couple times this season for the next few years. They need pass rushers, so I'll throw those three out. All right, so I have one question for you. What happens, and what's the storyline if Michael Sam does not get drafted? Again, I think it's impossible. I just I don't think that's possible. But if if the absolute impossible happens, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. Not just I mean, you look at the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. He led the conference in sacks. Uh, you know, before he came out, he was according to CBS Sports the number ninety prospect. The fact that they, as soon as he came out, dropped him seventy spots. That says a lot, and of course, the CBS Sports is not the NFL, but the perception is going to be in 
it is going to be a big problem for the NFL. And I'll tell you, if he doesn't get drafted, I will have to rethink my perception of uh, the acceptance of gay players in the NFL in every conversation that I had in Orlando. Why? Why? Yeah. Because th that guy, with what he did in college and, and the talent I believe he possesses, I, I just I can't see how that goes undrafted, how that's not one of the 256 players. I mean, you talk about the character of guys and the hard worker and the leadership. He has all of those pieces, okay? And he led the SEC in sacks and was the defensive player of the year. When I talk to players and hear players talk, they say, that guy is a player's player he can play. All of that, there's no way he doesn't get drafted. So I, would, I don't know what else to point to. So I'm going to be a devil's advocate here, right? So, like, you can look at someone like an Aaron Foster, right, who was second leading rusher all the time for the Volunteers, right, undrafted. You can, you can look at uh, um, Heim, um, Gino Toretta, Jason White, uh, Charlie Ward, like, Hosman Trophy winners, you know, champions, went undrafted or seventh-round picks, you know. Sure. So there is precedent there that players who are really good in college don't get drafted in the NFL or go very, very late. I, I hear what you're saying, but I will still be rethinking everything that I've said about the NFL for the last six months if he doesn't go drafted. But is it better for – so let's say the sixth round is over, right, and it's the seventh round. Do you want him to get drafted for symbolic reasons, or do you say probably best that he doesn't get drafted so he can pick where he goes? Oh, oh, for for his own future, uh, you know, if, if he go, if he gets to pick where he goes, yeah, I think that's better for him. But if if it's even if it's the seventh round and he's still not drafted, that NFL does not want that to happen. And I, I I'm really gonna have to rethink what I've what I've said, Wade, over the last few months. I really am. Interesting. Are you not? You think it's just whatever? That's just the way it is. Yeah, you know, um, like I said, like, so when I came out, there were, like, a lot of guys ranked lower than me who got drafted over me, you know, and when I asked scouts about it, they, they said, you're a small school guy. We didn't know, you know, and, and that's not Michael Sam, right? But there are a lot of arguments, conversations that happen that we're just not privy to, and I firmly believe and trust he'll be drafted. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say that the NFL is a horrible homophobic place. I know it's not. I know there are teams uh, that, that aren't like that, but I, it would really make me rethink what I've said. But anyhow, we kind of have to end this up. Any, any parting thoughts? Draft Sam, baby. <laughs> Draft Sam, baby. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. I'm sure we will uh, do a quick recap of the draft next week, and we'll talk to you then. Be good.